Hello, I'm Blake Skarlovi. I'm a principal consultant with Route 16. We're a dynamic CRM and power platform consulting company based out of Chicago. And in this video, I'm going to show you a new tool that we're releasing called Toolshed. It's a Chrome extension for Dynamics administrators and developers uh, to help with some, you know, daily tests that uh, you need to do to configure and develop for Dynamics environments. Uh, so what you'll want to do is go to the Chrome Web Store where you find extensions and search for Toolshed for Power Platform and install it. Uh, and then it's hard to tell on this video, but there's a puzzle icon in Chrome. If you click that, you'll see the new Toolshed extension and then you can pin it and then it'll show up in the toolbar uh, all the time. And it looks like a house with a wrench in it, a blue icon. Uh, so then if you navigate to a certain record in your environment, you can uh, click that button and it'll pop open this nice uh, UI here. Um, now you might be familiar with some Dynamics extensions that are out there already. Uh, the difference is this one provides more of a command line or chatbot type UI, which uh, provides a lot more flexible commands, more powerful commands, um, a lot more shortcuts and whatnot that we'll uh, show you in this video here. Uh, we do provide some of the more common commands that are used um, right here as buttons on the front page. Uh, so for example, you know, I want to switch these attribute uh, label names to their schema names so I can run this command. Now I see the schema names for these attributes and flip it back to the labels. Uh, any hidden fields on the form, I can click this command and it'll show me those hidden fields or read-only fields. I can enable them, um, help uh, provide more test data. Um, so you know, testing out JavaScript and, or plugins or whatnot with those fields that you normally couldn't edit. Um, and a lot of times if I navigate to a record in Dynamics, um, it'll mask the GUID from the URL so it's hard to get to. Uh, we have a command where it will display that GUID so we can copy it. Um, also, we can display the full URL as well. Uh, one command I really like a lot is Microsoft used to have a ribbon button that said like form editor uh, for customizers that would take them right to the uh, form for the record that they're on. But Microsoft has since removed that. We added a command back for that. Um, this one takes a little bit to load, so we'll come back. We have one for the maker portal as well, which will take us right to the maker portal for this specific environment. So we don't have to worry about switching environments there. Um, but here, this is loading now. So it's taking us to the contact form. Um, that's the record we were on. It's so we can easily edit that form. Uh, so those are some of the more common ones. Now we can click into this box here and it'll show up the full uh, list of commands. We can also run the help command, which will pull up uh, the list of commands in a description as well. Um, so the first command here, and you can also type into the box, it'll autocomplete if you know the commands that you want to run already. Um, this first one here will show you, you know, the flexibility of the command line. So this command create web resource in a solution. Um, so solution is our token. We want to replace it with the name of the solution. It'll automatically highlight that full word, that full token. So then I can just type the name of my solution and it'll replace it. So my solution is called core. So I can run this command, create web resource in core, submit that. It's going to take me to a, a new web resource form in my core solution so that it's using my prefix already. So if I want to create a JavaScript file for this form, uh, it's going to take me right there. I can type in the name. I can upload the file, save, publish, and it's in my solution. Um, and then I can use that form editor to add that file to the form. So just a uh, you know, more efficient way to do some of these tasks that you know, we're doing on a daily basis. Uh, let's see. So if you notice when we went to the maker portal, well, it's probably hard to see in this video, but it's doing make.preview.powerapps.com. 
So if you don't know, there is a preview version of the Maker Portal. You just put that dot preview in the URL. Provides a little bit more uh, functionality that Microsoft hasn't fully released yet. Uh, we like to use that one by default. Um, that's what the tool is using. But if you don't like to use it, you can type the disable preview URL command. So then when we go to the Maker Portal, it takes us to the normal URL. We can uh, flip that back on as well with the enable preview URL. Some of these we covered with the buttons already. Uh, Get form summary. This will tell us some information about this uh, table, this record that we're on. So the schema name of the table, um, the GUID, the type of the form, if it's create or update, um, and then a list of dirty fields as well. Uh, let's see, there's get user info as well. So this will give us information about the user, the domain name, the GUID of the user, business unit, a list of roles that the user has. Uh, we can get the version of the environment that we're in. Uh, we can quickly navigate to a specific table. Uh, so if I want to go to account, let's say go to account, uh, and it'll take me right there to a blank a new account form. Some of these commands will have multiple variations. So you could say like navigate to account or um, find account, some similar like that, just so you don't have to type the exact format. Um, and then another helpful one I like a lot is the fill the form. So if we're on a blank form like this, we can run fill form. It's gonna put in some dummy data and it does try to detect um, uh, certain fields like phone numbers or address fields and it'll try to put in more realistic data on those fields. Uh, doesn't do lookups yet. Hopefully we can you know, add that in in the future. Uh, and then I can quickly you know, save this form and it's gonna allow me to easily create some dummy data. Uh, and then we have a lot of just like shortcut commands. So open the admin center. It's going to take me right to the admin center uh, for my tenant where I can manage all the environments I have access to. Uh, open apps. This is going to take me to the maker portal, but it's going to take me right to the apps uh, in the maker portal for my specific environment. open default solution. So similar, it's gonna take me to the default solution in this specific environment. So this is very handy versus having to go to Maker Portal, flip the environment, uh, navigate to solutions, search to find a default solution, etc. This will take me right there. Um, there's an old diagnostics page. Um, it's still around. This is like running bandwidth latency tests. Um, so we have a shortcut to get to there. Uh, let's see, we can go to a specific table in the default solution. So I can say open account. It's gonna go right to the account table within the default solution in my specific environment. Um, and then similar, we can go you know, in a specific solution. So if I wanna go to account in my core solution, I can type that in. A lot of these are similar, just uh, you know, slight variations. I can go right to the flows in the maker portal. I can go to the specific solution. I can go to the full list of solutions, default solution. Uh, query fetch XML. Let's see if I can do this and do some simple fetch here. Uh, but this will run my fetch query and then spit out a JSON file. It'll download it uh, so that I can see the results. So down here at the bottom, I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but it's down spitting out a JSON file with the results of that query. Um, so that can come in handy if you have a, some fetch XML, you just wanna see what the results are. Um, some natural query language here, um, this, we hope to expand on the, the future right now. It's pretty basic, um, but I can do things like, let's see, retrieve a specific column. So if I want, you know, the first name from the contact table where last name 
is a specific value. So there's a contact record, Blake Scarvi. This should return Blake. So I can run that. There you go. The first name is Blake. So it's going to be the first name where, you know, last name is Scarlevi. So right now it's pretty basic, just some simple filtering and simple retrieval of the columns, but hope to expand on this. Um, let's see. Some of these we showed already. Oh, another helpful one. Um, in this environment, it's a very a demo environment, so there's not much data, but I could say like total account records. It's going to give me the total account, total count of account records in my environment. This is helpful if you have, you know, hundreds of thousands of records. Um, you know, if you navigate to that list, you can't see because there's only, uh, you know, pages of 5,000. It's hard to get a total count. You can run this and it's going to page through all the records and give you the total count. Uh, and then lastly, I like this one. Um, let's see, we'll have to navigate to a certain record here. So go to my uh, contact record here. Let's, this is good for testing. It's more for if there's an attribute you want to update, but it's not on the form. Uh, normally, you would need to go to the form editor, put that attribute on the form, publish it. Then you could go edit it, that value, then you could go back to the form, remove the field from the form, publish it, etc. cetera. Um, this will get around that. So I could say, you know, see here, job title is blank right now. Um, I could update job title to, let's see, developer. Run this, it's done. So now I can, my resolution zoomed in a lot. So. Uh, and there we go, developer job title. So it's more helpful if the field's not on the form, but you get the picture there. Um, and so there you have it. I think it went through all the commands. Um, so hopefully you like this tool. We love it, use it on a daily basis. Um, if you have any more ideas, you know, with the command line, we can um, definitely add in a lot more commands um, and we keep expanding on this in the future. So if you have any uh, suggestions, feel free to reach out. I'm B. Scarlov on Twitter, or you can hit up, you know, Route 16 on Twitter, send us some ideas and some feedback. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you like it.